Hello everyone and welcome back to Passion Sundays, the best way to end the week and start another. Our guest today is an adventurer, speaker, author who shows the world that ordinary people can do amazing stuff. Rob Lebo, thank you very much for being with us today. Great to be here, Mr. So tell me more about all the crazy stuff you do. What, what have you done? I mean, I've seen a lot of amazing stuff. Tell me more. Well, I'm, you can probably see, I'm a very ordinary guy. I actually used to be a geography high school teacher as my first job. And then I decided instead of teaching geography, I wanted to go and explore the world. So I ended up on a bicycle ride um, and I flew as far away from England as I could think of in a plane with my bicycle, which was to northeast Russia. And then I spent three years cycling home through places like Russia in the winter, Afghanistan, uh, Papua New Guinea and crazy trip changed my life and I suddenly became more of a professional adventurer still Mr. Ordinary still not ex-Navy SEALs or anything uh, but I've done other adventures walking across China walking across deserts various other crazy somewhat crazy things yeah I love that that sounds fun let's just go somewhere and take three years to cycle back yeah yeah what, what triggered that um I mean, there are so many levels to that question, why do you do it? But I think one was, I wanted to see the world, we all do. Another is, I enjoy adventure, most of us do. Um, I think a deeper reason, which I only realised afterwards, was uh, personal development, which is a kind of boring way of saying, um, I think when we take on tough challenges, it's our best opportunity to grow. And I really wanted to grow and develop as a person. Um, and I think that was a, a deep motivation for me thinking, right, I'm going to try and cycle across Russia in the winter because it's one way which is going to force me to grow. So I think that's really one of the things behind a lot of my adventures is I know if I take life easy, I'll just sort of stay as I am. But I always want to somehow stretch myself. I love that. Yeah. The geography teacher decided to stretch himself and he still is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. what would you say the key secret for you being able to achieve that? Because the trigger that you said is beautiful, but you could have got on the bicycle and two weeks down the line you go, what have I done? How did you keep going? I mean, again, lots of different angles to answer that with. I think I mean, having a clear goal, which, you know, we talk about goals a lot, but it really helps you to keep going. If you know where you're trying to go, you've set yourself a mission. Uh, but also, you know, there, there are underlying goals, like the underlying goal of personal development. That was quite, you know, I knew if I gave up, it would be sort of, you know, denying an important part of what I wanted to do in life. Um, I think also... Um, uh, I, I, although I was often on my own on these trips, it's amazing, as you'll know from your travels, you meet such amazing people um, who encourage you on the way. And again, it's a sort of metaphor for life. We can't make it on our own. And that, that re I, met, I was, encountered such hospitality on my journeys. Beautiful. So it's sometimes not having a big passion as much as finding little passion on the way to just keep going and refueling. Yeah, I think having the big passion is, is key, but then you have your sort of sub-passions within that as well. Yeah. yeah, that is crucial because sometimes the pit stops are as important. If you don't have enough pit stops along the way, you're just dragging yourself and it becomes too big to, for an everyday journey. Yeah, I, I think um, practicing self-care, you know, it, it, on a short expedition, you can just push yourself every single day for whatever, a few months. But on a three-year expedition, I had to stop, rest, hang out with people for a bit and look after myself. Otherwise, I ended up, you know, making bad decisions and crashing my bike and all that stuff. So uh, self-care is, and it's the same in, you know, the corporate world. When people push themselves too hard, too long, there are burnouts and all the rest of it. So interesting that you said that. So within three years, you must have had some accidents, incidents. And was there anything that was drastic? And was it drastic enough to make you ask yourself, and what am I doing and have self-doubt? Yeah, um, I'm a sort of self-doubty kind of guy. Um, so I'm always saying, you know, can I do this? Or, um, but I, thankfully, I've also got this kind of growth mindset of like, I can, I'm going to grow even though it's so hard. Um, but there were, I had, I was knocked off my bike twice, so thankfully not hurt badly. I was robbed twice, once at gunpoint, which, you know, is a real scare, but thankfully, um, you know, nobody shot me or anything. Um, and now I got malaria. So there were sort of moments of real crisis, I suppose you could say, but I found the worst bits were the, like the night before I went into Afghanistan, like the night before when you're play, you're, you're imagining what will go wrong, that you know, the, I think um, Shakespeare says, uh, 
present fears are less than horrible imaginings, and the horrible imaginings are, were the worst. And then when you're actually there, you're just busy cycling to get through it. So beautiful, yeah, yeah. beautiful. I love it. And uh, so, tell me a bit more about when you got back and you started this journey of becoming an inspiration to other people who are just like, hey. I'm just a, another guy and you guys can do it too. You must have faced also a lot of challenges at the beginning because not everybody might have been open to your message. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of happened by accident. I was, I was more or less planning to go back to being a high school teacher when I got home, but I, a publisher heard about it and asked me to write a book. National Geographic heard about it and bought my, made a TV show from my uh, self-film footage. And I started just speaking... Um, mainly in schools originally, like high schools would love to have me come and speak. And then that's gradually grown into a sort of full-fledged sp speaking career. So it's, I'm one of the sort of lucky people, uh, maybe a bit like you, you know, it's following passion and then that's kind of evolved into a, a speaking career too. So you never actually had that image in your head, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to become a speaker or, or an inspirational person. It just, you just did it for you. Yeah, yeah, it's the, it's the night, well, the first trip, that cycling trip, I did to go and grow up, basically. But what I learned afterwards, I did another trip a couple of years later, but that one I did for the wrong reasons. I did it with my commercial hat on, thinking, ooh, this expedition will look really nice, and I got, you know, we made another TV show, but it was so much less fun when you do things, it, tying into your thing, I was doing it for the wrong reasons. And so the more recent trips I do, I think, what do I really want to do? Maybe we'll leave all the TV stuff out, I'll just self-film it and sell it afterwards so I can follow okay. what, a genuine passion, like the genuine passion, and then it's so much more of an authentic trip. Um, so it's, you know, it's, you've, you, I've not thought about it like that, but I think that is how it works. I love it, so yeah. just find your passion by just following your heart and you know, it doesn't have to be the biggest thing in the world, just follow your heart and something will manifest. I love that. Yeah, I think, you know, there's that, that saying, you know, we've got to try and live a good story, but not live a good story which we think other people will think is a good story. I like because that. that. you know, that's the whole social media trap, isn't it? We do things because we think it will look good, but really we want to do things and then, you know, I'm, I'm actually to hopeless on social media. I spent, I sent four tweets on the whole of my last expedition, which wow. I'm quite proud of. But, well, which yeah. is, I, I love what you do because I'm, I really love this message. You know, if Rob can do it, you can too. Yeah, Rob. Thank well, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. I really appreciate it. This yeah. has been, been an awesome interview. Yeah, thank awesome. you so much. Awesome. Passion. What do you think? I really hope you found this episode as useful and as exciting as I did. If so, please leave your comments on the blog below and share it with your friends and those who might benefit from it. And if you'd like more tools, tips, techniques, and exclusive interviews that I only share on my website, go to mustafa.com. And until next episode, live passionately.